Perfect. <laughs> Mr. Olney, welcome back. Hi, it's good to be here. Man, that was fun. That was, that was a gas. Yeah, you're always fun. I mean, you, you know, a lot of really good new stuff, too. Yeah, uh, you know, when Dan and I started playing, uh, you know, I played with Sergio for a number of years, and that was great. And then it was time to try something new. And I made a conscious effort to kind of work up some new things when Dan and I started going out. Just always two now, even even at home. That's all that'll fit in the van. Well, you, yeah, but at home, are you playing oh, bigger? Oh no, well, we uh, we got a you know a drummer and a fiddle player uh, that'll come out and join join with us. What do you prefer? I like you know I mean if if it's a band and it rocks out and it's really you know, it does what it's supposed to do. That's really a powerful feeling. But just the economics of it, I don't know, I think when you go to a place and people are hearing you for the first time, I try to, like, emphasize, you know, presenting the song. And in that case, I think it's better with just the two of us. You know, you're not, you don't have to shout the lyrics and all that. Lyrically, the, the, the music probably lends itself better to you know but then the music's kind of intense too especially with yeah i mean he provides so much texture dan provides so much texture to the music that you know kind of yeah. kind of adds that layer to it but but you know for a listening room yeah uh, i mean it know. was i don't know in a way i just feel lucky whatever you know group i got with me before or if i'm by myself it's just amazing to at this stage of the game to still be doing this, you know? I was going to ask you about the stage of the game, because we can go back, like, what, maybe, I don't even know how many years back Contender it was. was. It was a lot of years. And then this new album, when I saw it, it was like, <clears throat> um, still in the fight, you know, or... Um, don't try to fight it. Don't try to fight it. Yeah. And, and, and like... You know, that's kind of where the inspiration for the poster came from, was, like, you know, still a contender and... yeah. You know, kind of the. Well, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to be trying to present myself as wow, he is a, he's a seventy-year-old man and he's, you know, still young or something. That always looks stupid as hell to me. Uh, <laughs> you know, just uh, he's an old guy, but he can still rock. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's real good. Yeah. What would you um if you could if you could go back to that twenty year old that was starting out, what advice would you give that twenty year old? Oh I wouldn't try to. I mean everything has to work out the way it works out. I made, you know, I mean every possible mistake on every level, professional, personal, whatever other level there is, I was like you know, wearing a clown suit and a lot, a lot of times, but maybe that's what you got to do to, you know, get to the next, get to the next place. No, I wouldn't try to give myself advice. I would, you know, earlier on, I would have said, Hey, pay more attention in shop class, you know, (laughs) (laughs) Huh. I don't know that I could even go anywhere from that. Let's talk about the new album. Um, yeah. Do you, um, you're fine. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm late to the party with, you know, I'm probably maybe a decade into your music, you know. Um, but I think now it might be... Um, are you finding more inspiration from what's going on around you? Uh, I find... Uh, it was the way I always approached writing. It always seemed to me that whatever song I'd just written, I would just go, well, that's it. The well's dry. I mean, I talked to people that 30 years ago, I was saying, I don't know. I think I think I see the end of the road here. And it never happens. And now I don't. I don't question it, and I don't try to intellectualize uh, how the process works. Um, one thing that I did change was I used to always just write by myself, and I started writing, especially with this guy, John Hadley. 
And that took so much of the pressure off that I just, it's more fun for me now to, you know, get something started and just say, well, let's, don't finish this. Let's go, let's take it over to John and, you know, and they'll be, or any other writer. I've written some with uh, Annie McHugh that you don't know. Someone else will just bring this point of view in either musically or lyrically that you never would have thought of yourself. And it just, it takes a lot of the pressure off. She's a great writer. Uh, she's a great yeah. person. Yeah, she's a tremendous person. She's a great writer. Um, and probably brings a, um, a lot of different perspective to, you know, yeah. how you're I'm, seeing I'm, things. She has musical chops. They're, they're like classical things that she brings. But I t you know what uh, I talked to her about one time? Uh, I like to make some kind of uh, video you know, like YouTube type thing of doing scenes from King Lear where she'd play the fool and I'd be King Lear. <laughs> what be, did she think of that? She slammed the door in my face. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was, she was. <laughs> she had to be into that. Oh, yeah. yeah she had to be totally into that. Huh. Um, Dan, do you get involved in the writing process at all or are you just interpreting and then arranging on your own? No, I think no. I don't. I haven't written anything with David. I but I we should. We should probably will. Yeah. Um, he just played harmonica on my new record that nobody's going to hear, but it's great harmonica. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to hear it. <laughs> yeah. No, but most of these songs, I think he, you know, he just shows up at my house and says, "Here we go," and then we just start kind of chipping away at it from there. You dig this stuff, though, don't you? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah big time. Yeah, yeah. I got, you know, yeah. you can just tell that you're. You're, you know, you're digging great songs, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. I feel like I, I, I get to have my say with that, you know. You know, with with Sergio, it was so intuitive. Now's the time for the guitar break, and this, you know, and he just would. I mean, it was incredible the stuff he'd come up with. Well, that's not going to happen with old Dave. A lot of times, the break is is something that's going on on the bass, but tonight. Uh, especially on Barrymore Remembers, you know, what, what you were playing was like, ah, it was so good. Sometimes I get lost in it and find out I'm in the wrong key. You know, when, 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 um, when, when you guys were here the last time when we were on the other half of the room, yeah. um, I noticed it that night. I don't know if, if I commented on it when, when we spoke on, at, at that time, but... I noticed it again really obviously tonight is, you know, you usually think of the bass as a rhythm instrument, and in this, it's, it's kind of almost a lead instrument. Yep. You know, it's, yep. it's, it's really playing much more of a role than just a rhythm role. Oh, yeah, and it's, you know, with two people, you can't, you know, you got to deliver some kind of goods. You know, you can't, th there's too much spotlight on either player, really. Yeah. You know, you've got to do something. Um, what, on, on the new album, what, what, what did we do tonight from the new album? There was, I think... Don't Try to Fight It and Situation. Uh, situation. Yeah, Situation, which, which you also did during the sound check, but then, you know, we were all kind of like, all right, when, yeah. when that came up, well, I, Connor was commenting through the, through the headphones. We were all like, oh, yeah, we're ready you know, yeah. ready for this. Where, where's that? I mean, that's um, the you, you told the story of, you know, a, a, a general worker, probably somebody working at a nuclear power plant while it's melting down. And, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. It, it's kind of what, what what came into my head. But where, where's that come from? Uh, that's one uh, that I wrote with John Hadley. And I think that just kind of came out of the sky. I went over to John's. I think I had that the lick, the ba da 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 da, and we just when you go when you write with John, you, it's like going to a psychiatrist. Not that I would know anything about it. <laughs> you think I'm crazy? <laughs> Stop that! Uh, <laughs> you start out and you just you just talk about stuff. And you you don't think you're writing a song, but in fact you are, and. John has a way of just kind of drawing things out of you, and once the ball gets rolling, then it and it, and it, it musically, 
Uh, it goes. It, it doesn't follow the same pattern all the time, so it stays interesting to me. And just that guy. Just I think uh, I thought of it as like maybe this is the way religion started. Is like some caveman is you know pinned against a wall of a mastodon or a saber tooth tiger, and is going, I need some help here, you know, and just <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> was there something that sparked this um, tour itself? Y- yeah, yeah. Was there something that? I mean, other than after a while, my family doesn't really want me in the house anymore. <laughs> maybe that <laughs> was. <laughs> maybe I just I mean, read uh, that. It's your... just it's what we do, and it, it's uh, almost disturbing to me that the way I am when I'm playing music on stage or, or just driving, I think that that's, that's who I am. That whatever way I'm going to get judged, if I do get judged, it, I want it to be on the music stuff because a lot of the other stuff uh, I don't do so hot. Yeah, you know? I hear that. And, yeah. you know, music, I've, I feel like the best part of me is coming out. And so, you know, as far as this tour or any tour, that's, I have to go out and do that to kind of remember who I am. It's kind of, you know, it's tough on, you know, family, wife, and kids and that kind of stuff because they kind of know dad would, or my husband, you know, really wants to go out on the road. And they know it's, but that's the way it is. Kind of a cathartic sort of, you know. If you don't do what it is that you're supposed to, that you're kind of made to do, then then you'll really be worthless. Yeah. And they're not going to like it. It may not be immediately apparent, but if I didn't do this, I mean, I don't know where I'd be. I don't think I would be alive. Do you play locally a lot in east on mm-hmm. the east side or in, in Nashville? I think we play, well, we play about four or five times a year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. That's, not, that's not a lot. That's not a local thing where you're you know where you're you, i can find david only any night of the week playing somewhere in or around nashville no you can nashville you can wear it out in nashville and the, you know there's so many performers and players that are really good that you know you kind of have to space out your performances uh or else people would just get jaded about it i haven't been back to the east side since i since i was there when we did you know, we did all of that really cool stuff on yeah. the east side of Nashville. Um, but I've heard that, you know, it's not even recognizable as to what it was like four or five years ago. Well, I don't know. It's still a vibrant music scene to me. I mean, this musically, it used to be Music Row or something like that. Right. Like, that's like Dinosaur City. The east side's still rocking. It's, you know, there's bigger, more and bigger buildings, but they're full of more and better guitar players. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the other reason we leave town. <laughs> it's getting um, too good there. Let me ask you, like, go back to songwriting for for a bit. Um everything you see around you, a song. Do you see the world as a song? Do you see or do you look at the world through songwriters' glasses? Well, what do I do? The the main th- I don't I don't know. Uh, the main thing that's worked for me is not to write specifically about myself, to try and m- make up somebody. I mean, if I wrote, if I were a kind of confessional writer, I would just get too embarrassed. I don't, I don't feel comfortable, uh, you know, displaying my emotions that way. But if I make somebody up. I can say all kinds of things about myself, <laughs> and I can be I can get a lot deeper than if I'm you know trying to say just what David only thinks about stuff. Are you making up figures that are actually you? I think if you you know the people that appear in your dreams, they're part of your brain, yeah, they're you know, do you remember the old goofy cartoons? Oh, uh, there was one of of uh uh Casey at the Bat. And all the characters in it. Now the pitcher has the ball. The pitcher's goofy. And now he, you know, lets it fly. The umpire's like 
goofy. The batter's goofy. The left fielders, <laughs> they're all goofy. They're all goofy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, a, I mean, it was like a brilliant uh, observation that whoever did that cartoon had that basically when when you make something up like that, whether it's a song or a cartoon or or just have a dream, that's all you. You go, that's why you forget your dreams. Most of them are too embarrassing, you know. Do you um did, did you still have the fire for all of it? Yeah. It's still you know, the idea of retirement uh, uh just is too is totally frightening to me. And I can, you know, physically it can kind of wear you out and the driving and you, you wake up some days and go, Oh, I didn't know I even had that thing that hurts now. <laughs> uh but, you know, you get on stage and everything is okay. I remember seeing a thing. It was, uh, I think it was uh, 60 Minutes was doing a segment on Arthur Fiedler. And, you know, beloved, you know, band leader, whatever they called him, uh, of America, you know, and shows him and he's being Arthur Fiedler and he's kind of over the top a bit. And then it shows him right before... Uh, a half an hour before he's supposed to go out and lead the band. And he's this doddering old man. I don't feel good. I don't. And his wife is there and says, Arthur, can I get you in? No. Here, have a cup of tea. It's too warm. I said, five minutes, Mr. Fiedler. Oh, I don't know if I can. Three minutes, Mr. Fiedler. On stage, Mr. Fiedler. You know, I don't know. I can even start walks toward the stage, and there's a guy standing there with a tray with a shot of whiskey on it. I don't know. <laughs> All right! <laughs> and just goes out there and he's Arthur Fiedler. You know? <laughs> and the rest of the time, he was like, you know, Uncle Jake. You, know? <laughs> you ever did you need a shot of whiskey before you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not that you're, I mean, I, 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 I didn't see any. You know, and I didn't see you dragging at all, even when you, I mean, you were. I, you know, as far as drinking, I found out just even a little bit would just throw your my concentration off a little bit, and it would just be something that I was conscious of. However, after the gig, when I take my victory lap, <laughs> you know, I yeah. feel like I'm dragging, uh, you know, Hector's body around the th three times around the walls of Troy. <laughs> Dan has has working um, working with David. Has that changed the way that you write? Has it How, has it added to? Uh, I don't know. I don't think because I don't. I'm not a big lyricist, so you know. But it, in terms of. Uh, I mean, David doesn't write regular old chord progressions, you know, so in terms of opening my mind to what you could possibly do, musically speaking, with, for lack of a better word, folk music, I mean, definitely, that, that's been an education. Yeah, because you're, you're hearing a lot of crazy chord progressions, and, yeah. and that's... And, you know, I get to play tangos and rumbas, you know, I get to play salsa, I mean, I'm playing every kind of music possible, in ten songs with with David. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it has changed. Absolutely. Kind of the way yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And you it's have a new an album education. coming out too. Well, you, well. Of course, you know Mark Robinson. Yes, of course. Um, and so he and I have been working on, uh, for lack of a better word, a jug band record. And we brought David in to play some harmonica, and Pat McInerney, a great drummer, to play drums, and maybe a few other people before it's all over. But Pat's played with everyone. As he's played with David, he's played with everyone. Yeah, yeah. Nancy Griffith, Don Williams. I mean, yeah, yeah. I get to tell my dad I have Don Williams drummer in my band, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. That's the cool thing about Nashville. Uh, you know, it's unbelievable. It's, it's the coolest thing yeah. about Nashville. I mean, you swing a dead cat, it, you're gonna hit forty. Hey, what's even cooler is all musicians. of these people are my actual friends too. You know that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you can show up at Mark Robbins, you know, you yeah. show up at Guido's. I was going to say, I, I could call them to help me move furniture, but it's probably the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you guys for being here. Where, where are you off to next? Where's Cape, Cape Cod? Yeah? Where are you playing down on the Cape? O'Shea's. Yeah. West Dennis. West Dennis. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, and then we go down to New York City. 
and play a house concert there and then on to Pennsylvania and then Maryland. And then Where are you in PA? At I don't know. Sellersville? I got it written down somewhere. Newtown Square. Newtown Square. Oh. Okay. Cool. <laughs> well, thank you so much for making the stop here, man. I'm glad you're here. Um, you this know, was great. Next, and, and, you know, whenever you're in this neighborhood, you know, make sure you make, sure you make a stop here. It's always man, a pleasure to have yeah, you. I'm, I'm a huge here. fan, and it's always a pleasure to have you here, and I'm, I'm just thrilled to death that you guys made the, uh, made the trip here tonight. Oh, Thank yeah. you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you all.